N-A, stroker, nitrous, blower, and turbo. The same cam works on all five. So, cue the music. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Oldner. I'm very excited. It is Friday, so welcome to the channel. Today, here is the question. Can I run a naturally aspirated motor? a stroker motor, a nitrous motor, a supercharged motor, Wah. and a turbo motor, all with the same camshaft. Let's check it out. So let's jump right in and illustrate what happens when we run the same camshaft with a bunch of different configurations. We've got NA versions and stroker versions and turbo versions and supercharged versions and nitrous versions. And guess what? The same cam works on all of these. I showed it recently in a video with the big block Chevy and now I'm gonna show it with a Ford using the 274 Extreme Energy Cam from Comp Cams. But it works with basically any kind of camshaft. They'll all do basically this, this same kind of thing. They'll work on all these configurations. So let's jump right in. We'll start off with our a naturally aspirated 306. So it was a rebuilt uh, production five liter motor. We had forged rods and forged pistons in it, stock crankshaft. And then we ran it with all of the stock stuff initially. So we wanted to start somewhere. I want to show you exactly what the cam was worth and explain that. And then we'll go into all the configurations. This one was equipped with a GT40 upper and lower intake manifold. It had stock E7TE heads. It did have valve springs in it because we were going to upgrade the camshaft. But right now it had the stock five liter cam. It was nine and a half to one. We ran it with a Holly uh, management system, 36 pound injectors. So equipped with the stock camshaft, our little 302 or 306 produced 278 or 279 horsepower and 323 foot pounds. And here's what happened when we put our 274 cam in it with no other changes. Power jumped up to 312 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 349 foot pounds of torque. And actually this camshaft would be worth a lot more power because it has two other things that are holding back the power production on this. One are the cylinder heads. The factory cylinder heads are very restrictive. And then also the GT40 intake manifold. So let's see what happened when we did further modifications on this combination. You can see we're up near 400 horsepower, 395 horsepower. Peak torque is 380. And this is with the same Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so that we have that for all of these tests. But it's with the same camshaft. All we did now was replace the, the, the restrictive stock cylinder heads and the struck and restrictive stock or GT40 intake manifold with a set of RHS CNC ported heads and an extrude hone ported Holly Systemax intake manifold. And this kind of power level is very common with a 302 or a 306 with this camshaft and a good like trick flow intake manifold or even other ported heads and stuff. So this is kind of standard for this deal. This is what kind of power you can look for with this kind of camshaft in your typical 302. Now they've taken a look at how well the 274 cam works on a five liter application, a fuel injected version. By the way, it also works as a carbureted version, which we're going to show here because the camshaft doesn't care whether you have carburation or fuel injection supplying the fuel. We're going to take a look and see we've stepped up from a 306 inch motor to a stroker version. And I've actually run this camshaft on 333s like the one that we have here, 347s. 393s and 408s, all the kind of common strokers, and it works very well. But our combination here was a 333 inch motor because this thing was a 3250 stroke, and we bored this thing 40 over, I believe. It was equipped with a 650 Speed Demon carburetor, a dual plane high rise intake manifold. This was a crosswind from the guys at Professional Products. We had this 274 camshaft in it. We had our hooker inch and 58 super comp headers. This was a flat top piston. The compression was about 10 to one. We ran it first with stock E7 TE heads. This was during a big cylinder head test that I did that we used this intake or this particular camshaft with. And it ran very well and run with the stock heads. It produced 352 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 400 foot-pounds on our stroker, but things really got going. I'll go ahead and show you. This camshaft works very well when you have, you know, good heads on it like every other camshaft. This is what happened when we had a, a good set of heads. And in this case, these were Airflow Research 185 heads. Obviously, they picked up a ton of power over the stock head. Not surprising. Lots of good cylinder heads will do this. But on the 185s, 
and the 274 cam combination, even with our dual plane, this thing produced 448 horsepower and 444 foot-pounds of torque. So it worked good on a 302, also works good on a stroker. Now let's find out how well it works with nitrous. Next up on the list for our 274 cam is to find out how well it works with nitrous. And for this, we're gonna look back at the combination that we put together, our NA version. This was our 306 with the 274 cam. It had the RHS ported CNC heads and the Holly ported Systemax intake manifold with the 75 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. So we ran this thing naturally aspirated, it made 395 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added nitrous to it. And in this case, this was a Zex wet EFI kit, meaning it had a single fogger positioned in front of the throttle body and the single fogger fed both nitrous and fuel into the setup, into this manifold. Now maybe <laughs> we could talk about a distribution issue with these long runner manifolds and nitrous, but at this power level, it seemed to work fairly well. This, the Zex wet kit was equipped with a 54 nitrous jet and a 30 fuel jet. And as you can see, it gained quite a bit of power. It pushed power from 395 horsepower up to 501 horsepower and peak torque checked in at the spike there at 562 foot pounds. You can see we got a nice solid gain all the way out to the top. Started to run out a little bit uh, or, or the power started to drop a little bit out the top and that has nothing to do with the camshaft and really had everything to do with the, the fuel jet that we were using and the fuel pressure that we were supplying. So a little bit more tuning could have made this a nice flat curve all the way out. But as you can see, nitrous works really well <laughs> with almost any camshaft. Just look at your starting point, whatever your NA combination is, the nitrous will just add power. So we can obviously check uh, naturally aspirated stroker and nitrous off the list. Now let's start jump into boost and we'll start with a centrifugal supercharger. Although I've also run this with roots blowers as well and they work equally well on that. But this combination was a 302. It was an Explorer short block from the wrecking yard originally, but we had upgraded it for a, a story that I did for the guys at CarCraft. We put some TrickFlow comp components on it, TrickFlow 11R CNC 170 heads. Uh, this has actually the TrickFlow version of this camshaft, but it's the same. The TrickFlow Street Heat Long Runner Intake Manifold, AccuFab 75 millimeter throttle body, inch and three quarter headers. And we ran this with this 274 cam and run naturally aspirated. This thing made over 400 horsepower, did good, made 407 or eight horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 397 foot-pounds. Here's what happened when we added a Torque Storm supercharger to the combination. So a centrifugal supercharger. Also run this cam obviously a lot. Ran it for years in my car with a Vortex supercharger. But as we can see, I'll go ahead and zing myself right up here and get it out of the way. But power went up from over 400 to 637 horsepower. The supercharger is capable of producing more power and this with this camshaft you can certainly make more power if you want to spin the blower up and, and you know spin it faster and make more boost. Uh, go ahead and put the boost curve up here and I say boost curve because on the centrifugals it's a rising curve you're making a mu much less down low than you are at the top. But this camshaft, just like it worked on our naturally aspirated motor and on this naturally aspirated motor, it obviously works with a centrifugal blower. And as I said, I've run it with a Kenny Bell twin screw and with a Wyand roots blower as well. It works equally well with those. So our final thing, let's find out what happens when it runs with a turbo. Final illustration with our 274 cam is to run it obviously with a turbo and I did exactly that. This is actually the same combination that we had done the nitrous with. So this was our 306 with flat top pistons, forged rods, stock crank, stock five liter block. We had obviously the 274 camshaft in there. We had the ported RHS heads and the ported Holly Systemax intake manifold, the 75 millimeter throttle body, long tube headers. And then we replaced that, well, when we ran it naturally aspirated first, we were, it made 395 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque. And then we replaced the headers obviously with our turbo kit. This one came from the guys at HP Performance. I'm gonna move that down just a little bit. 
And we're gonna take a look at our test description on the turbo setup. This was an HP Performance. We had 36 pound injectors. We had a small Turbonetics 72 millimeter, although they normally supply a whole set turbo with that. It had a big front mounted air to air intercooler on it. And obviously we tuned this thing and optimized the air fuel and timing on it. We ran this thing on a 100 octane, mixture 100 octane and 91 so that we could put enough timing in it. And this, I'll go ahead and show you the boost curve, but this was eight or nine pounds, I think. Uh, equipped with a turbo kit though, at even, even running low boost, 622 horsepower and 637 foot-pounds torque. We had a slightly falling boost curve on this thing uh, because we were just using a manual controller on it and not a electronic controller. But as we showed here, the turbo basically is just a multiplier of what's there. So whatever you're doing with your NA power curve, if you put a consistent amount of boost with it, just like with the nitrous, it just adds to what's already there. It didn't really care that we had a 274 cam or a 284, or a 294, or a 224. It doesn't really matter. The Whatever your starting NA power is, the boost just adds to that. And that's exactly what happened with this cam. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this video running the 274 Extreme Energy Cam on all sorts of different combinations? We had our NA302, in fact we ran a couple of them. We had our Stroker version, we had our Nitrous version, we had our Supercharged version, and our Turbo version. Did we learn that that's the best cam ever made and it works on all these combinations? Well, yes and no, it does do that and it's usually the cam that I recommend for most street kind of small block forward applications. But there are a lot of other cams that will also work. The smaller cams, the 264, the bigger cams, the 282s, in fact, lots of different cams from lots of different, different manufacturers will do the same thing. If you put your camshaft in your naturally aspirated motor, it will work on your smaller displacement motor, it will work on your stroker motor, and it will work when you add all of these like levels of power adder. It will work with nitrous, it will work with blowers, it will work with turbos. Pick the camshaft for what you want it to do on your naturally aspirated combination. Do you want to have a stock converter? Do you want it to have good idle? Do you want it to have good drivability? All these things that you want, choose the camshaft to do that. Then you can always add more power with a power out. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.